Today in our 2017 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300, we're going to take a look at and also show you how to install the Curt Custom Fit Class 3 Trailer Hitch Receiver. Part number is C13290. Here's what our hitch is going to look like installed in the Mercedes. As you can see, it offers a pretty clean look. It really doesn't change the aesthetics of the rear of the vehicle too much. You've got your receiver tube opening that's going to come out here. It's a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening. And you will notice about from here to here, the plastic on the fascia kind of dips down a little bit. That would be opposed to kind of notching this out or having to or the requirement to make a, a permanent modification to the fascia, which we wouldn't want to do. So that comes down and it fits in there nicely right up against our hitch. Now we've got the flush reinforcement collar here around the end. It gives it a nice kind of a flush, clean look. And with this being a class three hitch, you're gonna to have tons of different accessories you can pick to use with it. And for securing all those items, you'll use the 5 8 diameter pinhole. You wanna choose a class three rated accessory, but you'll notice there's more than enough room around there for any type you might want to use, whether it's uh, just a pin and clip, locking hitch pin, or even anti-rattle device. Around the bottom here, we've got our rolled steel stock safety chain connection points. It's going to offer a good amount of room to get whatever size hook you might be using connected. And one thing to keep in mind with the hitch, anytime you're hauling a non-wheeled load, so anything other than a trailer like your bike racks or your cargo carriers, Kurt does recommend the use of the stabilization strap, part number 18050. Now, as far as weight ratings go on our hitch, we have a 900 pound tongue weight capacity, so that's the maximum downward force we can put at our receiver tube opening. We've got a 6,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. That would be the total weight of your trailer and anything you were to load up on it. Keep in mind, though, you do need to check the owner's manual on the GLC, see what it's rated for, and use whichever sets of numbers are the lowest. Now, a few measurements that'll be helpful when it's time to select your ball mount bike rack or hitch cargo carrier. We'll be from the ground to the inside top edge of the receiver tube opening. We've got about 11 and 3 quarters of an inch. Then from the center of our hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of our bumper, it's about five and a half. We would recommend choosing accessories with the raised shank just to promote better ground clearance. Now to begin our installation, we're going to be removing the chrome tips that kind of cap off the end of the exhaust here. There are two T40 screws or, or bolts that we're going to be removing. We've got one right here. And then the other one's right there on the other side. So we use our Torx bit. Might have to pull that fascia down just slightly. Then we can get them removed. Now we're going to get our exhaust lowered down slightly to allow us access to the heat shield. We've got a rubber exhaust hanger here in the exact same spot on the passenger side. And then if we come forward a little bit, We'll have our third right here. It's going to be just in front of the rear differential if clipped. Now to remove these, we'll use a little bit of spray lubricant there. And then a long screwdriver or a pry bar. You're just going to try to pry the rubber away from the metal. Now we're going to get our heat shield taken down. There are quite a few fasteners. The first two we'll start with are going to be the 10 millimeter head bolt that we've got here on each side. Then just ahead of that, we've got a plastic push pin fastener, same spot on each side we'll take out. So we can use a flat screwdriver, use the center portion of that to come out first. And we can take the whole thing out. Now if it does separate, you can just place that back in there. Now we'll have 10 studs that are sticking down through the heat shield. They've got a small nut on those. We're going to use an 8 millimeter socket to get those removed. Now in each corner we'll just kind of pull down on that fender liner and work our heat shield back off the bolts and get it removed. Now we've got a push pin fastener right here in the lower wheel well that we're going to remove. It's just like the one we took out right here. We're just going to pull that center core and then the rest of it should come out. And if we look up just a little bit higher, we're going to have another one right there. We can do the same thing too. Now we'll repeat that same process for our passenger side as well. Now we'll remove the 10 millimeter screw right here at the corner of the lower fascia. And if we come over here, just past the exhaust hanger, there's a pocket with another one in it. We want to get that removed. 
Now there's gonna be a small wiring loom that runs across the back here and it's kind of clipped in along the way. So just like those little hooks, you wanna get those undone. Just trace that wire with your hand and anywhere it's in a clip, you wanna get it removed. Now to separate our lower panel, we just wanna kind of gently pull out on our trim panel here. He's got just a little couple push fasteners there. Now all the way across we'll have these little clips. You see it's got that little push down in the middle. We'll use a little screwdriver to kind of free those up. Now we'll work from our other side, bring it around so we kind of meet up here in the middle. We'll get our last two undone here and we'll set this aside until we need it for reinstallation. Careful when you remove it, make sure nothing's hung up. Now on the bottom of our bumper structure here, which we're gonna be removing shortly, the two exhaust hangers are connected right here. Now if you have an E12 bit, which is an inverted torque bit, it'll slide on there and you can remove that. If you don't have that, not very common. If you're very careful, you can use a 10 millimeter six point socket. And there's not a lot of torque holding them on there. Just back these off, it's gonna make our installation process quite a bit easier. Now with that removed on both sides, we're going to take off the lock nut that's on the bottom side closer to the front of the vehicle from our bumper. That'll be on both sides. Now we'll also have the one on each side on the top part of that bumper structure. It's in there a little further, so you might need an extension. Now we'll want to kind of gently pry out. There's a little bit of a double-sided tape there and once you have that separated on both sides the bumper should come right off now you'll see at the end of our hitch we've got the two oblong holes those are going to use the existing hardware we just removed we'll just place this driver side up over our stud and do the same thing for the passenger side then we'll place our bumper core right back where we just took it off of And on each side, and that top bolt will loosely install one of the nuts we remove, and we'll head underneath and get that lower point taken care of. Now with all four of those started, we'll get it snugged down, then we'll torque it to the specifications listed in our instructions. Now from the center point in the rear of our fascia here, we need to trim out a, a space for our hitch to fit. Start out from the center, there's a little hole right here. That'll be our center. We'll go out an inch and a half in each direction there. And then from an angle pretty much right there, we need to go down two inches. Now we'll just get that squared up and we can trim out that middle section. Now we're just going to use a regular pair of 10 snips or aviation shears here and get this trimmed out. Now we'll get our heat shield slid up back into position and we'll check the fit around the hitch there. If it doesn't fit, we can always take out a little bit more if we need to. Now you can see it looks like in this application we're a little bit too narrow to fit around the hitch. So we'll just take out a little bit more on each side. Now we'll just line up the studs that come down through the heat shield. And we'll replace the nuts that hold it in place. We're just gonna do the ones in the middle section here for now. We'll take care of the ones on the outside when we get the lower fascia back in. Now we're gonna guide the fascia up over the hitch tube. We wanna realign our clips get everything in position there and we'll work all the way around the edge getting everything lined up and clicked back into position. Then we'll have that push pin fastener that was right here at this edge. We want to get that replaced. We can reach in right in between the inner fender liner and get it up there. Do that on both sides. And if you just pull out a little bit, you can tuck that fender liner back in. We'll also replace the one that fits in the hole right down here on this edge. We'll do that on both sides as well. Now we need to go through and get our 
wire loom put back in its clips all the way across the rear of our fascia. Now is also going to be a good time to get our exhaust hanger brackets back in place. Start them by hand, you'll have enough room just to gently pull out on that fascia and get them secure. Do the same thing for our passenger side. With our harness tucked back in place, we're going to replace the two 10 millimeter screws that hold the bottom of the fascia up here in the middle. Now we'll get the ones that connect our fascia to that support. And we'll also line up the one for our heat shield. And with those on in on each side, the last one we'll have will be the push pin fastener here. We'll have our fascia resecured. Now we'll use a little bit more spray lubricant on each of our exhaust hangers, our isolators here, and we'll get those put back. Now we'll get our exhaust tip back up in position. You'll kind of have to kind of rotate it to get it to go up in there properly. And we'll replace our two Torx bit screws that held it in place. Now we do the same thing on the passenger side. And with our exhaust tips back in place, that's going to complete our installation of the Kurt Custom Fit Class 3 trailer hitch receiver, part number C13290 on our 2017 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300.